Hello teachers, welcome to TSH, Teacher Survival Hacks. Go ahead and click on that like and subscribe button if you like what I'm saying in this uh, uh, fifth video in my video series called Teacher Survival Hacks. This video series is geared toward helping the beginning teacher uh, get ready for the fall. It has an emphasis on science, on science instruction, but any teacher is welcome, including our veteran teachers, is welcome. If you think that I am able to give you some suggestions to help you in the fall, please, you are more than welcome to join this video series and listen, listen in to what I am saying today. Okay, so today is really geared toward uh, the first day in the first week of school, um, you have already um, did some things to prepare your cl your classroom. You've gone through uh, staff development, and you have set up and arranged your room like you wanted, decorated your room like you wanted, and please do that with a focus on discipline. When you make your room arrangements, please think discipline, as I said before, because everything you do from now on, you're going to have to think discipline, believe it or not, because in many cases, and I don't mean to discourage you, you're going to be pretty much alone as far as discipline is concerned. So you need to take a proactive stance on everything you do from now on. So you need to plan for everything you do from now on. Your mindset is going to have to change once the school year starts. Because the things that you're going to have to do and decide upon, you're going to have to make those decisions yourself as a classroom leader. And you're going to be taking on a mantle of leadership and making hundreds of decisions each day to help your, you and your kids uh, succeed. So please alter your mindset. Things are going to be different now. Your personal not life has now become a sliver of time. And so preparation time, student time, instructional time will take precedence now. Okay. So with that, I'm going to talk to you about some things that where the rubber meets the road. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is your diet. I've already talked to you about how to, you're going to should pre prepare your clothes, get your clothes together, um, how you should alter your mindset by getting up early, arriving the school, to school early where you're reducing stress. You don't have to worry about uh, competing with the bus runs. And the parents that are dropping off their kids and walking through the building full of kids and teachers that's going to distract you before you get to your classroom. Okay, you're going to you're going to avoid all of that because you you've gotten to school early. Those of you that can do that. I know there's people out there with child care concerns um, that are not able to just uh, leave when they want to leave and arrive when they want to arrive. I understand that. But for those of you that are single and free from any uh, responsibilities, extra responsibilities and burdens, you need to consider, strongly consider getting in a, through a routine that allows you to arrive at school early. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk to you, first of all, about your diet. People, you cannot eat the same types of food that you've eaten throughout the summer and the weekend. Because a lot of these foods, a lot of these meals that you eat can cause you gas, okay? And if you are a big coffee drinker and you just had to have that Starbucks each morning and it causes you to pee all over the place, you can't drink that anymore. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to let that go, okay? you have a very small window of time, a sliver of time to go to the restroom, people. 
And you can't, if you're an elementary school teacher or a middle school teacher, I don't know about high school so much because I, you know, most of my career was spent in elementary and middle school. You can't leave those little kids by themselves while you go use the restroom two or three times a day. You can't do that. You're going to have to eat a diet or forgo meals that cause you to go to the restroom. I'm telling you, this is where the rubber meets the road. If you want a paycheck, if you want to prevent liability for you to be absent outside that classroom and kids do things while you're outside that classroom, while you're in the restroom, you're going to have to forgo some things. You're going to have to sacrifice some things. This is Again, this is real life now. This is not student teaching. This is where the rubber meets the road. You have a very small sliver of time to do things now. Your life belongs to that classroom. You're in the classroom all the time. And people expect you to be there all the time. You're in the, you know, supposing you go to the restroom and then the intercom comes on. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, are you there? I want you to send John Thomas to the office. Mr. Smith, you know, you're going to miss the announcement while you're peeing in the restroom two or three times uh, a, a day. Okay, so no. You're going to have to uh, change your diet. You're going to have to consider what you're eating Sunday night before that. If that meal, that pizza gives you heartburn the next day and you know this, you can't have that pizza during the football game. So, okay. And then if you bring your lunch, where are you going to, you know, where are you going to store your lunch? Are you going to be a, the person that buys lunch? Some schools allow, you know, allow teachers to get in front of the kids because they know there's a limit of time for the teachers to get, get their lunch. So they allow, if you're buying lunch in the cafeteria, they allow you to, to get in front of the kids and, and buy and purchase your lunch and get down to the lounge and eat your lunch. Okay. Some people bring their, their frozen dinners and put it in the uh, refrigerator in the lounge. Okay. Or the uh, freezer in the lounge. Okay. I was fortunate enough to where I bought my uh, my five lunches uh, ahead of time and I would bring them in on Monday morning because I was fortunate enough to, as a science teacher, I had a refrigerator in my storage room and I would bring my lunches and put them in the storage room. So each day when I opened my door, I set down my briefcase, I went and put my lunches in the freezer. I took one lunch out and I put it in the microwave, which is also in my storage room. And I just sort of hit one or two minutes, let it defrost, let it sit there, get ready for the, uh, for lunchtime. Okay. So when lunchtime came around, you know, it was already halfway, uh, heated and I used a minimal amount of time to heat my food and I ate my lunch. Some of you are going to have to make the determination whether you're going to eat lunch or not, to be honest with you. And uh, let me tell you something. If you're one of those that, that just has to eat lunch in the lounge, uh, it's going to take you time to get down there to the lounge. It's going to take you time to um, get in line with all the other teachers to heat your food. And you're going to be gulping your, you're going to be gulping your food down. Okay. I used to eat in my classroom, to be honest with you. I don't know if the administration was kosher with that. I didn't ask them, okay? Um, and not to be uh, a maverick or get people in trouble. Um, a lot of administrations, they, they're okay with it. You know, they didn't have a big rodent problem. Um, our administration, where I was before, they never seem to really care. So I didn't ask them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. And I used to eat lunch by myself. Why? Because it allowed me to eat lunch in peace and quiet and allowed me to think about some things that I was doing through the day. Okay. So you're going to have to make those determinations. Okay. So quit drinking all that coffee that makes you pee all the time where you have to bother your, your uh, partner across the hall to keep an eye 
uh, I'm sorry, to keep an ear on your kids while you're running to the bathroom because you just had to have that Starbucks this morning. Okay? Don't do that. Wear some comfortable clothes to school. Okay, I know many of you are excited about your first day and blah, 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 and you want to wear your, your brand new outfit that you ordered or you found in the mall, whatever, that's fine. But make sure when you wear that outfit, make sure you wear some comfortable shoes. Do not wear brand new shoes to school because your feet are going to be on fire, okay? And another thing about shoes, also the benefit of coming in early is when I did come in early, as soon as I, I came in, I took off my shoes. And I have some old slippers that I, that I slip, that, you know, I put my slippers on. And when I set up my room, getting ready for the, my first period class and, and setting out things, I'm wearing my slippers. I didn't put my dress shoes on. Okay. Because I wear, weigh a certain amount of weight. And the more you walk around in those shoes, the more uncomfortable it's going to be. I have some, you know, I made sure I have some insoles, some brand new insoles. Um, they can be quite expensive though. Okay. Uh, I made sure my feet were comfortable, but I didn't wear my shoes out before the kids got there. Okay. I wore some comfortable shoes, tennis shoes, slippers, whatever that you can that you can wear before the kids got there when i went and made my copies before the kids got into the building and, you know when the kid before the kids get in the building it's more or less prep time what i used to call myself i used to call it zero hour because it almost anything goes so i'm walking around in tennis shoes and slippers making getting my copies done before the kids get in the building and so by the time they reach my classroom I was already in my sincere suit, as you can see now. I was in my sincere suit, and I was ready to go, okay? So, you're going to have to wear some comfortable shoes. Don't wear those brand new shoes that you, you know, those designer heels that you saw at the such and such store that you just had to have and wear. Don't do that. You're going to kill your feet, okay? You're going to have to get in teacher shape. That means... You know, in the summer, you were lounging around and, you know, you were at the pool and you're on your lazy boy chair watching the soaps and the movies and stuff. Now you're on your feet all the time. And we used to call it being getting back in teacher shape. What do I mean by that? Where well, you're standing all the time. And when you stand, your back's going to start hurting, especially people like me that have poor posture. And your back's going to start aching. And your shoulders are going to start aching. So you're going to have to get in, get used to standing a lot because you're handing out papers and you're mo actively monitoring your class. You're constantly in movement. You're not sitting on your butt watching the kids. You have to act actually actively monitor your class. So you're standing a lot. You're, you're getting in the power stance when they're taking a test. Or they're working on an activity, you're in the power stance, you're actually standing over them in the power stance, making sure your presence is known, you know. Uh, that takes a lot of um, a pressure on your back and your knees, and you're going to have to get used to doing that uh, in the fall, okay. All right, so the first day of school is always a... Um, interesting time, all right, because um, you will now see how much you are needed as a teacher and how much information that you are required to handle as a teacher. So the first thing that happens first day of school, and I'm, I'm talking middle and elementary school again because that used to be my focus. You're going to meet your kids and probably in the gym or in the cafeteria. They're all going to line up. Um, you know, you have your name posted somewhere in the gym, in the cafeteria, and they're all going to line, form a line in front of your name and stuff. And, and uh, they first go to the wall and find out who their advisory teacher is. If you have, an, if you have a school with a structured advisory class, what we, and back in the day, we used to call it homeroom. I don't understand the difference. 
why it has to be called advisory as opposed to homeroom, but whatever. Okay. So, um, you meet with your advisory class. It's usually the first class of the day. Okay. And so they line up like little ducks and it's time for you to bring them to your class. So you bring them to your class. You know, they're all pretty good at that time because it's the honeymoon period. What's the honeymoon period? It's the, it's the two week period that kids are on their P's and Q's. Okay. Uh, what, what are they doing during the honeymoon period? Well, you're probably getting their best behavior. If you can't have a kid that acts out during the two week honeymoon period, oh, this kid is oh, it's a challenge. Kid acts out during that time, oh, this kid's a challenge. You have to deal with this kid for the rest of the year. So you'll know those kids, and those are the first names that you'll know, is those kids that act out, okay? All right, so anyway, um, they're on their best P's and Q's during that time. So they'll be walking along with you very quietly to your room. You know, all very nice and stuff. Okay. So once you get to your room, you know, you check their schedule, make sure their schedule is, I mean, I'm sorry, you hand out their schedule and you're checking their schedule, making sure that their names are on their schedules and stuff like that. All right. And this is the time where you're making your seating chart. You should have a, a, uh, some sort of, uh, grid sheet with the, with, with the arrangement of your room. And you are asking the kids to write their name in, in accordance to where they're sitting in, in respect to where they're sitting in the classroom. You're making sure they're, they're filling out the seating chart. That's one of the first things you can do so you can learn their names. And you have to do that each period. But the first, but the first day of school, uh, usually uh, your advisory period is pretty long, okay? Because you want the kids to do some things to get the, get the kids to do some things before they walk the rest of their schedule and just sort of meet and greet the rest of their their teachers. So. The advisory period, first day of school, is takes up the majority of the time during the first day of school. Okay, so you give them their schedule, ask them to check their schedule, and so forth and so on. Okay, and then you look at the bus buses. You make sure you know first thing you do. You make sure okay, kids. You know what bus you, you remember what bus you rode on. Okay, so write your bus number on your schedule so you can remember that. So when it's time for dismissal. Um, you can get back to your right bus when they call out the buses. Now, there's going to be some kids that they won't know their bus number because they rode to school in the car with mom or Aunt Susie. Okay? And <laughs> a lot of these kids, they have no idea what their bus number is. Now, I never could get, I, I, and to this day, I don't get, you know it's incumbent on the parent to figure out the bus route, right? Before the beginning of school, okay? And so the kids should know the, the bus route number by, even though they're riding with Aunt Susie today, because, you know, Aunt Susie wants to, you know, he's so excited to bring the kids to school, or they ran late and missed the bus, which is really probably the problem. So they had to get in the car with Aunt, poor Aunt Susie, because mom has took off the work and the kids are running late and they had to ride to school with Aunt Susan. And so and poor Aunt Susan, she had to drop them off to school and no one has any idea of their bus route. So you have to look up their bus route. You have to determine their neighborhood and type in their neighborhood on the district website to get the bus route that services their neighborhood and such and such. I had two young men one year that did not have any idea of their address. And these are 11, 12 year olds that didn't have any idea where they live. And so I asked these two young men, how long have you lived in this address? Oh, it's just, it's I was born, Mr. Bond. I'm saying to myself, you don't know your address? Are you kidding me? I said, I got two geniuses this year. I got two geniuses this year. Don't even know their address, people. Okay? 
So anyway, I had them, thank God they had their cell phones. I'm more on that in a minute. I had to, you know, I had them text their mom or call their mom and ask them, what's my address, mom? You know how embarrassed I would be to have my child, 11 to 12 year old, don't even know their address. What did they do in, in elementary school? But anyway, that's, that's another story. You know, fortunately, these kids turned out to be good kids. But they just, you know, I was like, mm. you know. Anyway, you never know what, how kids are going to turn out during the year. But, I, you know, that it didn't upset me. It was kind of amusing, to be honest with you. And, you know, we laughed through it. You got to laugh at the kids sometimes. You know, they, they can be so cute and, and, you know, so comical that some of the things that these kids come up with. But anyway, okay, so we got through that. And so, okay. So you get the bus routes done, then your locker assignments, you know, you have the, uh, the kids go to their lockers and try out their lockers. I usually have the, the odd numbered lockers because they were upper lockers at our school, have those kids go out there and try their locker first. And then the bottom lockers had their, had those go, go second. And if you are a sixth grade teacher and, and these kids in elementary didn't have a, never uh, open a locker, oh, God help you. Because you're going to spend most of the time opening these lockers for these kids. Oh, God help you. Okay? And sometimes I would have a kid that was homeschooled and or, or new to the district and they didn't go to the school in the sixth grade. So I would have um, little Jennifer help little Wendy with her locker. Okay, and so they, I let her go out there and just okay, help her open her locker. Hopefully, uh, little Jennifer was honest. But usually they are. To be honest with you, they're on. They don't, you know, you, you're okay with that. Okay, so they would go out there and I let little, you know, get a person, get a person that's pretty good uh, that you think is 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 you know can help you help these kids with their lockers. If if you are a seventh and eighth grade teacher, you know in middle school or in, or in your high school or something, you know, get someone to help you do that. But, and even then, sometimes these lockers, you got to remember, these lockers take a lot of abuse and they're pretty old. Sometimes then you would have to go out there and open the locker yourself, okay? And God help you if they're the bottom lockers. If you're in the bottom, I'm 6'6", six, six, okay? And so I used to have to stoop down and open those bottom lockers. And oh my God, you know, and yeah, it hurt. Okay. So, uh, anyway, you get your locker assignments all done and everything's squared away with your locker assignments. You got your student schedules done and all that other stuff. Then the next thing you do is, uh, if there's uh, lunch concerns, as far as their lunch account is concerned, it's supposed to be already established, but uh, you get that done. Uh, you collect supplies from the kids. A lot of times kids show up at school with supplies. It was Christmas for me, okay? Because they come in with those tissues and them hand sanitizer bottles and stuff. And yeah, okay? I need that, okay? So I was always glad to see those kids come in with that stuff, okay? Um, uh, then, uh, there's some forms. If your district is, is one of the districts that, or, or counties or whatever, is one of the counties or districts that do things online as far as the nurse forms, the demographic forms, the military forms. Nowadays, they want, de uh, military demographics for, for parents and stuff. If you're, if you're one of th those districts that do it electronically, more power to you. But a lot of times we used to have to hand out the packets and we used to go over all those forms. Okay. Now, um, the thing also about your special, edu don't forget your special education kids and your 504 kids. Okay. You're going to have a plethora of special education kids and a plethora of 504 kids, uh, and you're gonna receive their mods. Now, will you receive their modifications the first day of school? No, you won't. No. It takes time for, for 
the, the, the people in the special education department to sort through all this because new kids are coming to school. There's kids that are checking out of school. There's kids that need ARDS from the receiving school, you know, all this other stuff. Usually the modifications or, I'm sorry, the accommodations for 504 are coming in from the counselor's department. And the counselors during the first two weeks of school, they are extremely busy. I had to give it to them. That's where they earn their pay. These people are extremely busy balancing classes, making schedule changes because mama wanted so-and-so to play the clarinet and now they want their child to play the trumpet okay and so they have to make a schedule change i didn't want choir okay i want kickstart well i want i wanted another subject rather than choir okay you, you get all these requests from parents that, that you know i wanted pe with such and such and I ain't such and such. Okay, you get all this stuff. So they have to handle the parents and their and, and the kids requests for different classes and things like that. And then at the same time, they have to juggle the classes and balance the classes to make sure um, each teacher has a balanced class and stuff like that. So the counselors are real busy the first two weeks of school. There's new kids coming in from from Timbuktu and they have to get all this receiving information from Timbuktu. The data assistant, the person that handles that ha is very busy at this time. She has to report to the district uh, about these kids and get all their grades in from the receiving, from the sending school because you're now the receiving school. And then some of your kids are actually checking out. And some of these kids are, are um, never show up for class and so you have to deal with those factors there's a lot of things going on at the same time okay so interesting day the first day of school okay and then uh cell phones okay now i'm gonna i'm gonna go over this with you and i'm gonna try to hurry up because i don't want to spend all day on 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 this video and on the cell phones okay cell phones can be a, the bane of your existence or they can what i'm trying to say they can be a hindrance or they can be a help depending on how you handle this okay and i'm going to tell you something before i get into the cell phone situation everything relies on the teacher Everything is centered on the teacher. All requests, all data, all situational awareness and things like everything centers on the teacher. Everything you are carrying the school, to be honest with you. Nothing happens in this school without the teacher. So please be aware that you're going to be bombarded with requests for this and requests for that. Once those kids enter the classroom, they're gonna be wanting kids for this and kids for that. And they're gonna want your opinion for this and your opinion for that. And they're gonna want you to answer this email and parents are gonna want this question answered. Just this one little question. I know, you know, I know you're busy and you want a little question. You know, you're gonna be hearing that from parents. Everything is gonna come down on you, okay? So, Please be aware of that. But anyway, cell phones can be a hindrance or they can be a help. And it all depends on how you handle the cell phones. All right. I'm going to make this statement to help you. Please be aware that you are subject to be recorded by students. So watch what you say to students. Some of these students... If they don't like you, and it, it probably won't happen the first two weeks of school because that's the honeymoon period and they're so nice. It probably won't happen the first two weeks of school during the honeymoon period, but sometime during the year, there could be kids that 
want to push your buttons. They have learned your buttons. And remember, during the honeymoon period when the kids are all nice, um, they're getting used to you. And you're getting used to them. But more importantly, behind the scenes, behind those pretty little eyes that you're looking at, that they're peering up at you, those beautiful little children, they're scanning you. They're looking for openings in your routine. And they're looking to see how consistent you are. And they're looking to, they're looking at your leadership qualities and how well you can lead a classroom. And do you have the courage and conviction to say no? And they're looking to see if they can manipulate you. Oh yeah, this is happening during the honeymoon period, baby. You can bet your bottom dollar that's what they're doing. They're scanning you. They're looking for openings in your routine so they can misbehave. They're scanning you. You're learning them, but they're scanning you. Okay, please be, be believe me when I say this. And I know some of you are thinking, hey, you're so negative. I'm being real. A lot of people say, you, know, you should be thinking about kids. Kids are not. Yes, they are. I'm being real. Okay? All right. So kids are, are naturally, um, they're good, but they are natural manipulators. They, they are ruled by their super ego. They want what they want. Okay? And so uh, please understand that. So you are subject to be recorded by, your, by kids with their cell phones. Little Larry will push your buttons. Lazy Larry will push your buttons and get you upset. And there's partner in crime. Stephen is recording you. And the next thing you know, your recording or your video of yourself yelling at Lazy Larry is on the interweb. Okay? So please watch what you say to these students in the classroom. Everything you do in your classroom, you are subject to be under surveillance. Please understand that when you talk to these kids. Keep your subject about whatever you're teaching, about science, about math, about ELA. Keep it there. Don't go personal. Don't yell at these kids. Certainly don't cuss at these kids because they can go click and you're, you're being recorded. Your voice is being recorded. And, the, and let me tell you something. There's no way out under that. You have no defense except for, I'm sorry. You're going to have to fall on your sword and say, I am so sorry. You don't want to put yourself in that situation. Okay, teachers, because of the length of this video and the time that I spent uh, going over the first day of school or and or the first week of school, I'm going to forego uh, my activity for this video segment to help some of you. Uh, I must apologize um, for the length of time that I spent uh, going over the um, the first day in the first week of school. I apologize for that. But um, I will make that up on my next video uh, post regarding an assignment activity that can help some of you in the fall. So with that, again, I am Michael. And I thank you for your time this time, until next time, we'll be seeing you.